Hello there everyone and welcome back. Sadly I kind of did miss out on a week to bring you a Battlefleet Gothic video and with the Black Friday sale it, we're at least having a little bit of a swell of new players. It remains to be seen how long they're going to stick around but it's a good opportunity to try something a little bit fun and not so much serious and you probably already know what I have in mind here for we're going back into the was it the five rock fleet? Basically to all uh, Big Rock's fleet. With a battleship just because I kind of need a capital ship of some kind to serve as the flagship. Trust me, if there was a way to go all battleships, or all rocks rather, and then just have the flagship just be an even bigger rock, I would definitely do it. But that's not going to be possible sadly, try as I might. Yeah, it just puts it down here for the rest of the line ship sadly. But can you imagine just having another rock for a flagship with a tractor cannon? Maybe even be allowed to do 360 degrees with the tractor cannon? On top of all these other skills that require... Well, that are actual weapons, essentially? That would be a little bit absurd, but... Sounds like amazing fun, but... In all seriousness, this is more like of a... Just a, a joke fleet, a little bit more for fun. But even though the rocks do have a lot of practicality... They are very limited in their point defense, so anything that relies heavily on fighters, bombers, and of course boarding parties could do a lot of damage to them. So face off against Tyranids, maybe Drukhari, and even Space Marines, even though the few cases I have played against Space Marines with this fleet, they have been victories. Those are most likely just roll right over me, just because I don't have the point defense to kind of shoot their stuff down. And in the special case with Tyranids, they can regenerate their boarding torpedoes and ordnance, so even trying to outlast them and dodge them is kind of out of the question, sadly. And in all honesty, I was thinking of go doing the Blood Axe fleet with my good old uh, Commando strategy, since that also utilizes rocks, but considering the sale, we're going to do something a little more fun and probably... Hopefully, not going to be as punishing to any newer players because the Blood Axes do rely a little bit more on stealth, which can really screw over newer players quite a bit if they don't know how to deal with that. So, what better way to even the odds than to have them see me coming? So, just in case you don't know what the idea is with this fleet, I have the flash gets for the battleship to increase its accuracy of the Mega Cans primarily. So, this essentially could shoot at long range with pretty good chances of hitting, especially since the battleship is slower than everything else. And then I comboed out with the extra range for said benefit. So even though the battleship's going to be lacking or kind of lagging behind a little bit due to the severely faster speed of the rocks, it can still contribute, it can still use the tracked can, which is what I love most about this fleet. Because the tracked can has almost exclusively been used for uh, uh, repositioning your opponent's ships and not so much repositioning your rocks, which can be very useful here. So without further ado, let's get this started. Alright, Alpharius. I've, I almost want to say that's the Alpha Legion Primarch, but I feel like it's misspelt a little bit here, so I'm going to say it's an imposter clone and we're going to deal indiscriminate justice against them. Although it is the Tau Protector Fleet, they are without a doubt going to be scary if this is the 6 Cruiser Fleet. I could dodge the Secret Missiles relatively well with the rocks just due to how they move, but the problem is is the bombers really, because I mentioned before how the point defense are going to be a little bit lacking. To kind of emphasize my point, the Orcs in general have was it three less defense turrets than a regular cruiser of the other factions, essentially. And when you factor in the fact that the rocks are even more expensive than even an orc cruiser, that kind of compounds on that problem a little bit. Although they almost have like 360 degrees of movement, they don't really have to turn. So there is possibility I can evade the seeker missiles due to their guided properties or how they can chase after me. But... That's easier said than done, especially when we're dealing with maybe six cruisers. And actually, let me just group this appropriately to make this a little bit easier. And 
I will have one of the Frigus actually grab the points, because you never know if this is going to drag out, in all honesty. Town are going to be tricky to hunt down. Oh, I thought I set these to group two. Maybe I hit the wrong button. Either way. I don't think Brace for Impact is going to help that much for the reasons I just stated, but we are going to try. And is there any other tweaks I want to do? Because Stasis Bomb shouldn't work due to their fast turning speed. Nova Cannons for the same reason, essentially. While Shock Attack could cripple them and I could follow up if I'm so lucky. Never mind the fact the rocks actually go faster. Oh, I thought I set you to group one. I don't know why my groups are all messed up, but either way, we'll go with it. And so far we're seeing five ships. I do want to destroy the deck on one or two of them though, but... Getting the engines crippled on at least one of these ships means I have something that I can hunt down. Even though the rocks are actually faster than the town cruisers, so... I could potentially still run them down if I'm diligent enough. If I am... Um, don't get intimidated. But we are seeing five ships, so I'm wondering... Well, I guess this gives it away. This is like a battleship or some kind of auxiliary ship, I want to guess, just because of the speed difference. And sadly, having no fighter base means I have no easy way to kind of identify them ahead of time. So we're going in blind, folks. We're going in blind. Which is kind of how orcs normally do it anyway. But, so far... Okay. Well, this is going to be interesting. Because I well, kind of want to get in close because that's kind of my thing with rocks. The main plus size, they this probably is a newer player because they would have charged up their cutting lasers on the asteroid belt, sadly. You got it. So what would have been a possibly very serious job? loss for me or very difficult match for me just because of how close I have to get. It's looking very optimistic due to their lack of experience maybe. Let's not judge them yet. The Demiurgs still have respectable firepower. It's the morale that's going to screw them over, though. Now. Nope, they're boring me. Call to arms could be useful there. Experimental railguns, that's fine. Now, let's be mindful of a tracked cannon. Actually, with that said, let me actually... Do said maneuver. The fight is over here. And now I'm just curious, is that a custodian or not? It looks like an only regular cruiser, honestly. Move that junk. Full speed. Now, actually, let's transfer the crew over. I don't want this to hit the yellow stage, ideally, if I can help it. Here we go. And once we do get some rocks in there, that's going to hurt them a bit. And even with Brace for Impact, these bombers are going to do noteworthy damage to me. Okay. That's two torpedoes, so they have only one more torpedo bay left. Oh, and they're not even... I was kind of hoping they were going after the one in front. Huh, interesting. Call me crazy, but these look like bombers. That circle silhouette normally means that they're bombers. Oh, that's because of upgrade. All right, so that is kind of an interesting combination there. I'm just not going to call the arms for this one, just because it's going to get crippled regardless. And these rocks cannot be quickly hit, but we do need to be mindful of the cutting laser, though. So let's get everything in there. Force them to run, because I can just straight up outrun these ships. Oh, that was not what I wanted to do. Now, what do I board? Just the flagship. I want to cripple that because, of course, it's the flagship. But there's a nice little trick that I wasn't aware of with the Demiurk and the bombers. Because the Tau Protectors just have one bomber per squadron. In the case of the Demiurk, they have multiples. So yeah, the crew just died there, that's fine, we're just going to reactivate and just repair. And again, I could just strip out run these ships. 
and with the tracked can, although I gotta be very careful of... Yeah, I just gotta be very careful, because the flagship is kind of my lifeblood here, if that thing were to die. And with the panicking that they're probably doing now, this works out well. But the flagship needs to die. If I can pull that off somehow. Actually, just, yeah, hit the red button and get behind all the ships. The flagship's gonna definitely be vulnerable, but uh, I really want that ram. Because once the flagship's gone, that helps a ton. Because that's, again, because they're auxiliary ships. Let's see, I have rally. I am gonna get bored quite heavily, but I'd rather it get bored it than actually destroyed because of the morale bon penalty would kind of inflict on me. So one of them is out, the others should break pretty soon just because of the fire assaults. And they're, I guess they're getting charged up by the cutting lasers since I don't recall them. Oh, never mind, I don't have to worry about you. And this is the big flaw about having the flagship destroyed. I didn't even check to see if they had the ambassador or not, or the emissary. To kind of prevent that from, or at least greatly minimize their morale penalty. Now it's just a mess of hit point bars, but they panicked, they got scared of me. I don't think with Demiurg you should get scared. But if you can focus down the cutting beams on a single rock or a single ship, even without them being charged, that's a lot of damage. Uh, they did not have the ambassador, but that is something to seriously consider. Sure, it was kind of a technically a hard counter situation, because again, I had no point defense to realistically stop all those bombers. Even with them kind of blindly just sending bombers and no fighters to kind of screen and take the point defense shots. That was still a ridiculous amount of boring results with the bombers. So there's a neat little trick to use with the auxiliary ships. If they can ever become practical for any kind of future meta, I suppose. Because yeah, it specifically mentions the Manta bombers with this upgrade. But as we just seen, that's not entirely true. And the reason that's important to note again is because the Tau Protector ships... The, was it, the Protector, the Custodian, they launch a single bomber per fighter bay, whereas with the bomber squadrons, that's, and at least with the Demiurg, that is three bomber squadrons, or bombers per squadron at least, which drastically makes a difference with this upgrade. Alright, it's our numbered Tyranid friend again. So, this is definitely not looking very promising for me. Just because if this is the fleet I'm thinking of, it's going to have the three cruisers with boarding torpedoes, the void lurker on the hive ship. And when I played up against this before with this fleet, I was a little bit indecisive, which may have hurt me or maybe even cost me this match potentially. Since I didn't know if the strategy should have been to just wait, kind of wait them out because of that uncertainty with them being able to just straight up regenerate their torpedoes and fighter bays, or if I should have relentlessly pursued them. Because I did eventually get in range of the hive ship, even with it just jumping away from me. So that probably is what cost me there, but that was also so long ago, I don't really remember the thought process and how that match even played out. So that's a bit of a problem here. Hmm. Do I... St Again, it comes down to the question if I just forfeit the objectives altogether or not. Because it's very unlikely I'm going to win before the timer elapses. Novacans could be useful after they rush. Stasis Bomb would be nice, but I don't think there's any way to turn off their Void Lurker, is there? I'm trying to rem remember if there is or not. Never mind the fact that I have no saps for that. Some immune to morale damage could be useful if they're pyro acid, but I'm suspecting this is more the cruisers and was it the boarding shenanigans? That's what I'm wondering. 
Either way, I don't expect this to be a fair a match in my favor. Just because, again, if you if you even watched that match before when I played against Tyranids with this fleet, there was a lot of uncertainty, a lot of questions on how do I best employ or what's the best tactic. And I think I have to ultimately just commit to trying to rush them down. And I am the server host, so in theory, I should hear them rushing. Okay. So that gives that away. At the very least, I'll have the battleship grabbing points for me, which helps, but... There's almost no way I could stop their uh, boarding parties, is there? The only catch is, I think, the assault boats for Tyranids go 200 movement yeah. speed, which is the same speed as my rocks. I could be wrong there, but Tyranid fighter ordnance and fighters are really area. damn slow. And I never did get the beacon, which is another thing, but it's not like I could take advantage of the beacon very well. And my opponent's being very helpful with giving away their position. Okay. You have seized a strategic area. So we're just going to try and dodge these. And we do thankfully have the gas cloud to help negate the fighters. Which is really convenient for me and... And there's the flagship, just Foy Lurker and everything. The enemy has seized a strategic area. So that makes dodge them really easily, but now it comes down to hunting down the flagship. Sure, they're gonna reveal me. I should plan for another gas cloud, which is probably not gonna work very well. Because very likely I'm going to intercept the freak, the cruisers, before anything else. Judging by how close this cruiser is. You want us over there? Although, in all honesty, going after a flagship would be better. It's just poorly positioned for me to really jump it, though. It's the only problem. Oaks, oaks, oaks. But I do have a bit of downtime. If my That's opponent was smart, purpose. they would have just recalled these right now. Not so much so I can just avoid shooting them down, but more so. Let's see. Fighters, yeah. So they're running. That's kind of no surprise there. Yeah. Well, I lost my train of thought. I think I want my opponent to recall these so that way they can launch them sooner is my point that I'm trying to get at. Since it didn't really help them here in any regard. Now, there are some... I am curious about the speed, but I think they still outrun me. Judging by what I'm seeing. And there's going to be a handful of frigates here, which are going to slow me down to a crawl. And because I'm immune to fire assaults, I should still be alright here. I'm watching the movement speed with great intent here. Because they are destroying my point defense and all that. We see where the flagship's at, but... I don't think it's working as much as I like. Yeah, actually, the assault boats are actually getting shot down conveniently. Just because I... Nope. Hold that thought. Full speed, just outrun the assault boats. Can you still outrun them at 400 movement? Now, I'm not going to get this the flagship, I'm pretty certain. And you know what's going to happen when they die. So, got to be careful there. Uh, they still managed to board me, even with, like, shooting down most of their assault boats. And that's just going to run away. So, if I could somehow last two minutes, but like I said, this is not going to go well for me. If you're, if there's some kind of betting going on for who's going to win this match, it's without doubt not going to be in my favor just because of the amount of mobility I have versus my lack of mobility. 
But if the flagship does not die, that's a bit of a different story. Oh, that was not what I want. Yeah, I want to use the track can, stupid me. I just rushed that because I was so used to my track can being a... Uh, button one. Either way. That was the idea to... To just get them out of the spore field a little bit better. No. Oh, you already scanner pulse, so... Not likely to get to grab that as nice as it would be. And it's just gonna keep jumping away. Let's not fool ourselves. There's almost nothing I could do to actually catch that thing, as much as it would make my life so much easier if I could do it. Now, ultimate question, I should try to keep grabbing objectives, and these spore fields are about to expire. The sad news, though, is... Yeah, that's no longer in the gas cloud, I'm willing to bet. Okay. At least now we know where it is, it doesn't help us too much, though. And his shield's probably already fully charged, too. And one rock is not going to be enough to kill it. Now just rally, although I should have repaired the fire assault in all honesty. And again, it's just a problem that they can regenerate their fighter base, so even if I have the crew to just take all these hits, it's gonna amount to very little. Let's be honest right now. I would have liked to have grabbed the objectives, but... Again, that's where my predicament comes in. Do I just try and grab the points and just outlast them, or do I actually try to kill off their ships? Because I could tell you without much of a doubt that two rocks are not going to be able to kill the hive ship as important as that would be for me. And I don't think they're going to run very much there. And I am immune to the critical, the fire assaults at least, so there is always that. Although you need to get in a better position. They are getting fire assaults with that set regardless, which might be more to the crew damage than anything else, honestly. And sadly, that's just gonna... that's gonna mute me again. So the boring results are doing enough fire assaults to me, but I'm pretty certain the pyro acid can't cause those critical hits. Since my ships te technically are immune to critical hits, as per the wording here. But I don't think I'm going to get what I want. Like I said, two rocks are very likely not going to kill this thing. And even just reinforcing the ship's not going to help me very much, but... I am pretty certain... ...that a rock could take on one of the cruisers if they stay in range long enough. Now, this is the problem here. I need to reinforce you, which I can't reinforce you, to reinforce this, which is currently on fire, which doesn't really help a whole lot. And again, they're just regenerating their assault boats, so I'm basically gaining nothing out of this besides just probably just not being all that exciting to watch, in all honesty. And I can't destroy their engines or force a mutiny until the flagship's gone. Which doesn't help a whole lot either. I could still do a lot of damage to him at a certain point, but... Especially when they're running from me, but... Again. Destroying the deck... Destroying all that doesn't really help me. In any regard. So I'm wondering, realistically, what would be my best strategy? Because the other alternative I had was maybe to just try and grab the objectives and sit on them for as long as possible. Because none of our ships have been destroyed and they're getting really close to a victory for that thought process alone. 
So if I was able to grab at least three objectives, this might be a different story. Because I did destroy their frigates, after all. And there's no way to reactivate this. So not very exciting to watch, sadly. Just because of their sheer mobility and... Can't quite do the damage and doing scuttle effects is not going to help me either. So this is already over. And it really just comes down to the fact that they can just recharge their abilities. That is the only thing that's really giving me the problem right now. Because all they did was run away from me, so it's not like their weaponry and all that was going to do much. And as soon as I act... Yeah, as soon as I activate the rocks, that's not going to help either. Since I am quite literally down to one crew and a frigate. Hmm. Yeah. For all intents and purposes, there's almost nothing I can do aside for maybe hope for a decent objective layout. Because again, not a sing Well, I did lose a rock there. Or two rocks, even. But this game's almost decided just by the points alone. Despite how long this is dragging out. And the, I could hunt down uh, some of the cruisers relatively well with the tracked cannon. And even a beacon to kind of reveal them. But even then a beacon doesn't do me a lot of good just because of the short range of everything. Yeah, I could just track can. If I had timed it properly, I could have had a scuttle just as it was reaching them. But even then, that would not kill them. But yeah, I'm, tr I'm just trying to figure out how to better optimize if there is even such a way with such a potentially flawed fleet just because I don't have any fighter bays is an easy way to deal with their assault boats and torpedoes. It's a lot of the reason why I like having at least a single f carrier ship. Because they, a single carrier ship alone single-handedly stops all a fleet that's launching all bombers or all assault ships and they're forced to respond. Never mind the fact that I have more point defense. And even then, if I were like a Blood Axe fleet, not even including the extra point defense or the fact that... Oh, I even changed this there. Yeah, you have fighter bays. Not much, but... More point defense is more notable. Just because, again, I have more ships, as you can clearly see. So, brace for impact and all that is helpful, but... Sadly, the one thing I was wondering about, if my rocks could actually keep a good distance away from their assault boats, never amounted to anything, and even then, they still got a lot of boring assaults in, so it didn't even seem like I killed any of their assault boat squadrons in that match. Even when I had the, all the time in the world to just shoot down their assault boats, sadly. Okay, Necron this time around. So, I was secretly hoping to play against the Tyranid opponent again. So we could try and have an opportunity to re refine a little bit of my decision making for this, that matchup. Even though it is arguably kind of one sided there until I could figure something out. But... We can have a little bit of fun with Necron, right? They do have the 83 armor, but with their lack of shields, I could still cripple them pretty decently. And I do have access to Novacans, but do I want for here? And I'm, I gotta make damn sure that the Novacan and the Trax can are on the right button. Because I instinctively went to the second weapon skill, thinking it was my Trax can at that point, but it was not the case. So is Novacan the right choice? Because I really am fond of Plasma Bomb just because of the 360 degree arc it gives me. It's a lot more convenient if they try and jump behind or to the side of the flagship. And of course, just grabbing these points can be pretty helpful too. And I have very easy access to three objectives and again with the lack of being immune to critical hits I should be in pretty good shape against most of the Necrons. And even if they have the upgrade to allow the flagship to cause fire assaults on me when, when they board, I still have emergency repair to negate that really well. It's just the critical hits 
from doing enough troop damage that might hurt me. Here we go. So we have a Scourge. That's going to be a bit problematic. Mainly because the fighters of the Necrons actually just destroy my, or damage my hull. So I may have to switch to Brace for Impact area. pretty soon. And what kind of upgrades? Structural Analyzer, Tomb Ship, so... And I do have Gas Clouds, so... Retro's on. Yeah, let me just use the Gas Cloud here to kind of negate, rocks. hopefully negate, the first wave of fighters. I do thankfully have another gas cloud afterwards, but we'll see how this works out. That will at least buy me some time, especially since I think this is... At least I've seen by Selector several times already, but I think they are still a newer type of player, so... They don't quite all know all the nuances just yet. And I think I can hide... Well, I still want this in the gas cloud, just be thorough. You have seized a strategic area. So they are going to reveal me, but everything is hidden. You go ahead, boss. So at least the, the first wave of Scourge Fighters is area. at bay. Now I just got to wait for this to recharge. Yeah, you reveal me, but... Thankfully, they did not recall them, so that gives me a little Here bit more go. time. I don't really want to boost yet because I don't know when exactly the Scourge is going to launch his fighters again. Faster, you grots. But if I can engage them while those fighters are out and doing absolutely Move nothing, that then that gives me nice breathing room to kind of pressure them. At least a little bit. Uh, do I? I should probably boost with the also, flagship. So at least hopefully it's back up in time to just jump over this gas cloud. But it probably means I need to switch to reload for that to realistically work. Because, yeah, they're going to launch it right now, and I don't think it's going to be off cooldown by that time. I do at least have torpedoes to help mess with that some. It might be the best use of my rocks in that case, since they literally only fire a single torpedo in 90 degree arcs, essentially. They're not going to do a whole lot otherwise. Especially when... The bug, I want to argue it's a bug, is still in play that denies the rocks or torpedoes from piercing through armor. You want us over there? So 15 seconds. So I am going to have to kill the one fighter squadrons here. And it is doable, but otherwise if I don't kill them fast enough, area. then without a doubt oh, those Scourge side. are going to do a lot of damage to me. Orcs, orcs, orcs. On. Come, I have brace for impact on everything, but I don't think I could kill him fast enough, even if it is a single friggin' squadron. Here we go. You have seized a strategic oh, just in time. So that completely deflects that. I got the objective. Got it, and now let's start putting the pressure on this one ship. Ideally. Hit the rip button. Because they are going to be ignoring my hull a little bit. And as soon as that jumps, that does reveal them some. And putting a track can on this rock is kind of pointless for me. Since as soon as they're outside the track can range, that's when it just expires. So it doesn't do me a lot of good aside for speeding up one that's hanging back. I just kind of wish I had lock on still. But it felt kind of needed to deal with the Scourge Fighters. It felt like it anyway. Yeah, and the Scourge is not actually going to be able to do any damage for a bit. So I have Brace for Impact, so ram me all you wish. I think it helps me more than hurts. And actually, I can't quite Plasma Bomb, but it's an ar arguably a little risky just Plasma Bomb right away. Oh, that sucks. That really sucks. I feel for you there, buddy. Because what probably happened, they tried jumping where there was a ship too close to proximity. And uh, I was really hoping to kind of track can something. But I think we're okay for a little bit. 
Now I do have to watch for when the Scourge Fighters launch, though, with that said. Oh no, they're not even destroyed yet, so that works out well. And this engine is destroyed there, so you're not going to jump. Your deck is still active, or your engines are still active, rather. And with the two extra points of troop damage, that should be pretty good. So reload, do all that stuff. Just finish him off. Because now, with the engine temporarily gone, neither of these could jump. Not a very exciting match, but that Scourge without a doubt is dangerous. Actually, let me launch torpedoes because they are using fighters on this flagship. So I'm just... Oh, mass recalled, so that's fine. We did a lot of damage. We permanently destroyed stuff, but... Let's see. I gotta keep launching torpedoes to kind of distract the fighters. And thankfully I I have time for that, and the boring torpedoes won't actually hurt me. I kinda of wanna rally, but we'll wait until the fire results kind of kind of gone first, just in case it does mutiny. I want the... Because if I burn repairs, then I'm really low on morale. I'm waiting for the fire results to expire, basically. Come on. Sadly, the deck is damaged, so... But... We kind of know where they are. Sadly, we did not kill the fighter squadron, which would have been really nice. Because I'm pretty certain they only have three charges of the Scourge fighters. And they're just repairing health. So outside of going after the flagship... Actually, let me just regenerate the crew here. Because that would be pretty nice to get this crew back up and running a bit. Actually, we have time to kill. Because my opponent's just going to cower, so... Let's just go and let them have their health regeneration. Because I did board the flagship, or at least the tomb ship, to the point that it can't they can't recover the crew that they lost the is over here. I just gotta make sure they don't jump after the flagship and try and kill it since it is a bit of my lifeblood there some now I have three points actually if they're gonna come after me maybe I can engage them some especially if a frigate I just want to see what kind of ship this is. Here we go. Enemy ship sighted. All right, so it's just the cruiser there. I might as well grab all the points in that case. Although having two, what's gonna, probably going to happen is they're going to mass the recall there, so. I do need to be mindful of that, so let's grab these three points. Kind of even odds a bit. You go ahead, boss. And ready. I do have lock on as well. The fire is over here. And I don't know if I. Enemy ship okay. Uh, Alright, just run. Do what damage is necessary. And ideally, I would like to just, actually, that's going to force a jump, is what I'm expecting. And sadly, I cannot track cannon, but can we at least kill off? Oh, I've got to keep my fighters. And... I am going to have a lot of morale damage, but that was badly timed. I know I want to rally and all that, but we can still kill these off really well. Just switch to reload when I'm able to and just kill off these cursed ships. You should have waited a little bit longer, I'm afraid to say. 
because I could deal with your fighters incredibly well with these torpedoes. Sadly, I can't quite board very much, but again, I could deal with these fi the Scourge fighters. You're fleeing. Although, is the deck destroyed? No, the deck's not destroyed. But we are in prime firing range for both ships, so this is like the sweet spot. I could not ask for much better. Just keep firing torpedoes, kill off the Scourge, then finish off this ship. And keep it from jumping, which is probably what's going to happen. I am about to run out of morale, though, so let's be very mindful of that. So, in fire assaults yet, yeah, I could still lose this, just because of the morale. And with the faltering crew, that's going to be a bit of a problem as well, but... You your engines are permanently no, gone. We are still Go in ahead. good shape. And hopefully I can repair these fire assaults relatively quickly. Although encouraging speech is really Fast tempting, I'm not going to lie. But the amount of morale damage I'm taking is still ridiculous. With that said... It's not supposed to burn, fix it! Orbs is best! Now, with no fire assaults and actually more torpedoes, let's not forget about that. You got it. Although, I think now we're kind of fine. The Scourge is no longer in place, or they don't have, like, the five skirt fighter squadrons to really hound me down. Oops, oops. The enemy has accumulated 75% of strategic points. And just harass this thing. So I can disengage some with the boosters. How far do exactly do I have to go? I would love to destroy that, but... Not meant to be... I would have loved to have scuttled it, but... Is what I'm trying to say, but... And I still have to grab the damn objective unless I could kill this thing now. So I might still lose this. Just because, and the rocks are going to take forever to try and grab the points, too. Yeah, the rock's going to die, and they're going to have a point lead because of it. There's going to be no way I can kind of win this. I didn't want to reactivate because I'm pretty certain I could not reactivate the ship. So now I'm going to lose, because there's one damn point in the middle. It was so close to... And I'm not going to be able to do enough damage to kind of uh, force this thing to mute me, am I? Unless I can get lucky critical hits, that would be the exception. I do have the armor, but that doesn't help much. And actually, maybe you could just try and ram the ship. That might help a bit. Here we go. Yeah, there's like 40 points left. Sadly, this is a loss. Is it was so close to. Yeah. And even if I had... Yeah, just this one point alone cost me. And because I'm light cruisers versus what? A battle cruiser? No, just a regular cruiser. It would take me so long to just grab this point, too, sadly. That's a shame. Ah, uh, well. It was close. It was down to the wire. It just wasn't meant to be. Sadly. Sadly.